This is the second video of the Autodesk Make Anything video series. And in this episode, we're gonna machine a couple of these saw push sticks because you gotta stay safe when you're ripping those pieces of plywood. And also thanks to Stepcraft for lending me one of their 840 CNC desktop mills. It also does other stuff, but a comprehensive review coming on that machine at a later date. But it doesn't matter if you're running a $700,000 CNC mill or a lot cheaper version like this one. You better get your ducks in the row when it comes to your CAD, your CAM, your post processes and all that stuff. So your first piece should probably be something fairly easy to attack. This is the first piece of the step craft. So um, let's run the intro and get into Fusion 360. So we're gonna start with a fairly simple 2D sketch here. Just make sure that you get everything using constraints, get your dimensions on there, fully define it, turning from black to blue. And there's a card coming in here. If you are brand new to Fusion, here's some great absolute beginner series to kind of get you started if this, is, uh, if this is brand new to you. Now, when I got it all defined, I'm gonna extrude this one 20 millimeters thick. Now, of course, depending on your material. Now, here's something I really like to do when I'm modeling. Right click and hit appearances and change the appearance. I'm gonna choose pine here. I just, I don't know, it just makes me happy to see something more like what, I, what I'm gonna end up with. Now, I'm gonna place the text here. Uh, the Stepcraft. This is not the, the right font. Uh, I'm sure the Stepcraft have some uh, better font, but I thought it looked pretty close to it. Now I'm just placing the, the text right here. I'm not going to extrude it yet. I'm going to wait with that because I'm just using the text as a reference to add a couple of handles to the model. I'm going to use uh, the slot function within Fusion 360 and there's actually fairly uh, different uh, types of slots you can you can use for that again just here just fully defining uh, and placing the dimensions for that but again at this point the text is just as a reference you will see me uh, cut that into the board just in a second now here is a neat trick i want to show you in dimension if you right click you can actually select tangency for your dimensions uh, versus the standard center to center. So if you didn't know that one, that was a little tip in this video. All right, um, I am pretty happy with uh, the placement of, of these here. So now I will go ahead and uh, hit Q and uh, you know, you can pull in one direction and you get stuck. You can go the other direction and you're cut into it. And I'm gonna make sure in the dialog to the right, I'm gonna select through all. So if I ever change uh, the thickness of the board, then the cut will always uh, go through it. Now, I'm just gonna add a, a couple of fillets uh, to the model here. I'm not too, with this model here, I didn't take uh, inside corner radius in approach to cutters or anything. I'm just gonna let that be. I just wanted to round a couple of the edges. Now with this, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hit uh, move copy. Just make sure you check the little copy symbol. And now I can make a copy of our original uh, one right here and place that. I'm gonna be able to fit two pieces on, on, a, on here. And now I will create the Autodesk uh, logo. Now, Autodesk actually does have a, uh, a font, a kind of cool, uh, its own font in here. So I'm just gonna place that. And again, I'm just placing the text somewhere close, somewhere close where it'll fit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and just make a cut all the way through. And we can look at that and that looks uh, pretty good. Now you'll see to the left, we have a lot of bodies in here. Uh, and that's because each, uh, both text has uh, these islands in the center. So we're gonna have to attach those. Now you'll just see, I'm just gonna go old fashioned here and create some sketch uh, geometry to do this. Now you might have a tendency to think you could offset the center line, but you gotta remember that font is actually coming from pixels. So uh, this A, these lines are not perfect um, coming through here. So I actually draw all the lines manually and I actually just went through the process and kind of like dimensioned uh, everything to make sure that uh, it was where it should be. So I'm gonna speed it up here because it's kind of like the same process uh, through each of uh, these different these different letters. Just adding a little bit of meat uh, between there so we can make sure that uh, you know they um, 
the, the center doesn't fall out when we, uh, when we machine this. Now when I've done this, I'm going to extrude it all the way through. And I was a little bit concerned about it might be changing the, the font, so it looked a little weird, but I actually didn't think so when I, when I looked at it in the end. That's it. That looks pretty good for me. Go up and hit the save icon and make sure that you save that project out to uh, wherever, wherever you want it. Make sure you save it. I know that this went extremely fast. Again, here is the card. Click on that and you will get back to the absolute beginner series and that will take you through a lot more relaxed tempo if you are new to Fusion 360. All right, so let's get into a cam here. So I'm gonna do something that I've done before when I had multiple parts on a sheet. I'm just gonna open a sketch in the top and just kinda like draw up my sheet size um, I also knew that I had a couple of clamps I had to add here, so I actually drew one of the clamps in, get a dimension so I know how far it should be from the, from the edge, so it's safe not hitting it with the end mill. I also draw a circle here, this is going to be where my pickup's going to be at the machine, so that's kind of like defined just like that, so when I'm defining the work offset, that's where that's going to go. So now we're ready for cam. Now here's a card for setups, if this is brand new to you, I'm not going to go through it here, but as you will see, I'm going to go in and uh, place uh, the work corner system right there on the corner. Now we are ready for our first operation. So I'm going to use a 2D adaptive for the letters. Now this is my first machine where I'm actually going to machine wood. I've always machined steel, so this is new for me. I'm going to go into my local folder, I'm going to create a folder called wood, and uh, I don't have any uh, tooling in that one, so I'm going to go into uh, the tutorial one and I'm going to borrow a couple of tools in there. Now I'm looking for a 3 and a 6 millimeters, but of course was not in there. But I'm just going to drag from the tutorial library into that wood folder and then I'm going to go in and right click and edit them and now make them, you know, my sizes, so, so 3 and 6. So there's a 2 flute, uh, 3 millimeter, just adding uh, some flute length, it's total, it's carbide. Now the feeds and speeds. This is maybe where uh, some of you guys maybe have uh, some good suggestions in the comment area and I need it. I went by uh, some good videos that Stepcraft have made and I kind of like decided that I'm going to stick with 20,000 uh, RPM with the machine. That is controlled right on the spindle. And then the feeds and speeds, I, I went out with 1500 millimeters uh, a minute, uh, what seemed to work okay. Um, I decided to try to be a little bit uh, conservative with that. Now I'm going to take the three millimeters for uh, the lettering here and uh, then go in and select uh, the text. Now be aware when you select text, there's a little red arrow where you can flip the, flip the direction uh, on, the, on the text here. So make sure you, you do that so you get the insides. Now the height tab, I have made a live stream on that before. Uh, I selected the top of the lettering, so I changed uh, the bottom height to the stock bottom. And then I also made an offset that was about a half a millimeter past it because I want to make sure it cut through it. With the three millimeter, I did a 0.5 millimeter optimal load uh, on the cutter. I was not quite sure how much I could push it, um, but it worked really, really, uh, really well. I went in and created what is called the derived uh, operation instead of just uh, selecting the 2D contour. When you right click on an operation and select derived, you're actually copying all the settings over to the next operation. So this contour is our finishing operation for the letters um, and by using derived I don't have to re-pick up all the letters uh, and everything. I really just have to go in and change a couple of things. So I'm going to set multiple depth and I decided to go 5 millimeter uh, per depth um, in here. Now that just uh, that should do the lettering should be good enough for this. Now I gotta do uh, kind of like the handles. So now I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna select the six millimeter uh, end mill. I'm gonna select this time I'm selecting at the bottom of the geometry, so I don't have to select the change the bottom depth. I am gonna add another half a millimeter to that. Um, and here I went with 1.5 millimeter optimal load um, and going full depth. Now some of you guys who knows a lot about wood, um, I might need uh, you know some of your assistance uh, here <laughs> with some some tips and tricks. I should probably uh, go conventional instead of climb milling um, but yeah uh, this was uh, kind of like my first attempt machining 
something, something like this. Do the derived again for the finishing operation. Um, and then I had to machine the outside. Now, when I was going around the outside of these, um, I decided the, the rule of thumb and do a uh, half the step down for the cutter diameter. So in this case, the cutter is six millimeters and I went uh, three millimeter step down. I turned the tabs on inside of the contour operation, what is, uh, what is really handy. Now, of course, you should always uh, simulate <laughs> when, you, uh, when you're inside of your CAD. So here we can kind of like speed through, see the lettering, see the adaptive machining, the pockets, and then uh, kind of like slotting uh, the outside. And you kind of like see uh, the tabs showing up here. Now, one thing I wanted to go in and do was I just had realized that my tool numbering was off. So going back into the tool library and reset that. So I have tool number one and tool number two. Now I'm going to have to change them manually though. I use the post processor, the UC, C and C that used for this one. I'm using the standard one. You can download right from cam.autodesk.com uh, forward slash posts website and it worked awesome. So you will see that I post out two programs because I don't have that tool changer set up yet. So the first program is just the engraving and then the second program is to machine the handles and uh, the outside of the pockets. So that was really a quick run through of the CAD and the CAM. Now, of course, uh, we want to see some, uh, some machining. Now the program here does run for a couple of hours, uh, so I'm not going to bore you with all that. But you see here, starting out with the first letter here, going 10 millimeter depth and uh, using the adaptive. And if you're not familiar with adaptive, it's probably easy enough in you know soft wood like this. Um, but it's really really nice to kind of like just get rid of material without. I uh, have to worry about, you know, having pieces of stock falling out. Here you see the UC, C and C uh, working away uh, added here. Now I'm having uh, the spindle running here at about 25,000 RPMs. Uh, and this, you can normally hear this and it, it sounds uh, pretty good. Now I did have a little bit of mismatch with my letters. And I think that this was something on my end where I, I think I maybe have moved something, but you know, I thought for a test cut, fine enough. So now we're ready to uh, start machining out uh, the pockets. Now, one thing I realized here was I should probably have gone just with a plunge instead of the helix in here. That was probably a waste of, uh, of time. It would have been great for steel. Um, but hey, I thought, why not? Speed it up here a little bit and then I'll give you uh, what I will call my money shot from this video here. Here you see the finishing uh, tool path going around uh, each of these handles here. By the way, this is the clamp uh, to the right here that I drew up in my sketch just to make sure that I didn't hit it with anything. Now I did get some smoke when I ran this and I had slowed the feed rate down on this one to 750, 750 millimeters uh, per minute. Um, but it seemed that the cutter didn't get, it definitely didn't get dull, of course, in this uh, soft uh, material. Uh, but as you can see here, a little bit of smoke kind of appearing. But like, again, the cutter seemed sharp. The cutter didn't seem to be uh, very, very hot. So I think I would run uh, those same feeds and speeds if I had to run something soft like this uh, again. Clean it all uh, up here and uh, get the board released. I kind of like had it on this uh, piece where I could machine through without uh, machining into the table of the, um, the step craft by itself. So the parts is uh, held by uh, a couple of, uh, of tabs, as you will see here. And uh, I just used a little saw to kind of like uh, break, break that so I can get the, the part out. 
Now, a little bit of handwork. Uh, just, I just took my sander and kind of like sanded the outside. Uh, and then I took actually a little exacto knife uh, just to uh, to kind of like clean out any uh, burrs inside of, of the of the lettering itself. This is probably where somebody will tell me between climb conventional. In metal, you always climb um, when you're using a CNC, but I think with wood you might go conventional. I have something to learn with that. Here is the shot you saw from the beginning. Uh, so I tested them both out and uh, it seems like they work uh, really, really nice. Now just for, for the added finesse in the end, uh, give them a little bit of paint just uh, in, uh, in the copper colors, just to, uh, to kind of like add a little swag to this project. I hope this was somewhat useful. The file you can find down in the uh, description area of this video. So you can get the file, you can check it all out, uh, you can see the feeds and speeds and all the different settings that I used for the cam portion and of course also go through it uh, for the modeling. I hope you like these videos. I have more planned of these so um, definitely if you like them give me the thumbs up on it um, and any comments that you can share down in the comment area especially if you have experience with machining wood. I think that I probably need uh, to do a little bit of homework on this stuff but super fun uh, to use and uh, you know really again appreciate Stepcraft lending me this cool machine. So until the next time, hope you have an awesome, awesome day.